have used the Fuji X100V basically since its release in early 2020 and the Fuji X100F for a full year before that. And in that time, I've made a habit of always carrying those cameras with me everywhere I went. I have used the X100F on my last trip to New York City at the beginning of 2020, which, thanks to COVID, was my last kind of big international trip and I've used the V in all kinds of everyday situations and weekend getaways, including my engagement trip to Italy this year and well, at least I like the results that I've gotten from those cameras a lot. So the X100V has grown very near and dear to my heart over the years. I know it in and out, have customized the JPEGs to my own style and I have come to a place with this camera where I am happy with like 85% of the images I shoot with it. And that is without any editing or post-processing. But for the whole duration of me owning that camera or its predecessor, I always had that nagging feeling in the back of my head that was just asking, what if I had the Leica Q2? The Leica Q2 has for years now been that mystery fixed lens camera by this German heritage brand that costs more than three times as much as the V and even though I was sure that it could not possibly be three times the camera that the V is, I always wondered what the difference actually is. A few weeks ago then I visited my uncle for the first time in a long time and he actually owns a Leica Q2 as well as a Leica M10P and a couple of Sumilux and Simicron lenses and void lenser lenses and I had a chance to play around with all of those and especially the Leica Q2 was obviously very interesting to me. And bada bing bada boom, just a week later I finally decided to make the jump and I bought my own Leica Q2. So is it worth the upgrade? Let's talk about it. Now there are a few categories that I personally think are the most interesting when it comes to making the decision of whether one should go for the Leica or the Fuji. And while price is obviously a deciding factor, I'm not going to discuss it in this video. You have to make the decision for yourself if any of the two cameras or if in fact any other camera is worth the asking price for you. So the categories I will be talking about are the following. Build quality and design, colors and JPEGs, low light and video. Before we go any further though, let's talk about some other stuff that I've seen other people talk about a lot when comparing these two cameras that I personally think aren't actually that relevant when it comes to making a decision between the two. If however you are only interested in any specific aspects of this comparison video, feel free to use the timestamps down in the description below. Let's get into it. The two things that I've seen other people talk a lot about when comparing these two cameras that I think aren't actually as important as people make them out to be are one, the form factor and two, the focal length. So let's start with the focal length. While the Fuji has a 23mm lens on an APS-C sensor, which means an equivalent focal length of 35mm, the Leica comes with a 28mm lens on a full frame sensor, so it's a true 28mm lens. You do, however, have the flexibility with both cameras to switch between those two focal lengths. Admittedly, you do need to add the wide conversion lens for the X100V to get a 28mm equivalent field of view, but even with that, it is still way cheaper and as compact as the Leica Q2. With the Leica Q2, on the other hand, you can simply use the integrated crop modes if you want to and still get slightly more compression and resolution at a 35mm field of view than you do with the stock X100V. I think nobody would disagree in saying that there are situations where having a 28mm might be more useful than having a 35mm and vice versa. But again, you have the flexibility to alternate between those focal lengths on both cameras, at least to some degree, and with a bit of fakery and crop involved. When it comes to the form factor, again, at least when you want to use the X100V with the WCL, you end up pretty much in the same place as you do with the Q2, and the differences in size aren't too big to begin with. Yes, I guess you could fit the stock V in your jacket pocket, but first of all, it's not weather resistant without any filter mounted on the front, and secondly, it's not really that compact without a filter either. It's not like comparing the Q2 to an RX100. Me personally, I would never run around with this fat so in my jacket pocket. But that's personal preference of course. And admittedly, if you are not planning to mount anything to the front lens of your Fuji and you are not interested in having a 28mm field of view and form factor is your highest priority, well, you can just stop watching this video. The X100V is tailor-made for you. And maybe also check out some of Rico's offering and you're good to go, buddy. For the rest of us though, let's talk about the differences in those other categories that I mentioned earlier. Let me start by saying this. The Fuji X100V is a beautifully designed and made camera. According to my fiance, it is by far the best looking camera that I've ever owned. 
The Fuji X100V is also weather resistant according to Fuji, at least if you have a filter mounted to your lens. They do however not disclose any kind of weather resistance rating for this camera. The button layout of the Fuji is incredibly intuitive and easy to get familiar with. And even with its rather minimalistic layout, you still get enough buttons and wheels to play with and customize to set it up just the way you want it to. There are however some quirks, if you like, with this camera that are somewhat at odds with its overall high quality appearance. Most notably for me, that is the lens and the noise it makes. It makes strange noises when you start the camera and it is squeaking around all the time when you use it. I honestly haven't noticed it as much before, but now, coming back to it after using the Leica for a few weeks, it is very noticeable. With that being said, the shutter is a bit more quiet on the Fuji and you can hear the stabilization work on the Leica. So take this with a grain of salt. Both cameras operate fairly quietly, so I guess you won't be disappointed with either of the two. The Leica Q2 is built like a tank. It feels a lot heavier than the Fuji, but in a good way. It feels more dense and solid because it has more heft to it. Even though the Fuji is built very well, it feels a bit like a toy compared to the Leica. That is in part due to the weight, but you start to notice that all the other little parts, like the gripping material and so on, just feel more squishy and of lower quality on the Fuji. Again, I can't stress enough that I think that the Fuji is actually a very well built camera, but the Leica is just better. The Leica also does actually have an IP52 water and dust resistance rating, which is nice. I personally haven't had any issues with the X100V in the rain, but I know people who also own the X100V and they had issues with moisture building up in the viewfinder after using the camera out in the rain, and that was even with the filter mounted to the front. I have already used the Leica out in heavy rains and hailstorms for longer periods of time without any issues to report. When it comes to the button layout, I'm a bit torn between the two. The Leica is even more minimalistic than the Fuji with fewer buttons and dials and all the important stuff like aperture, shutter speed and ISO readily available right where you would expect them to be. Most other settings, however, are hidden somewhere in the menu. Don't get me wrong, there are very intuitive and well-structured menus in my opinion, even though other people might disagree, but I think at least Leica makes good use of the touch functionality. It is however something that I got to get used to. Overall, at least in my opinion, I think most people would prefer the Leica menus over the Fuji menus, for the simple reason that there are a lot less menus in the Leica than there are in the Fuji, because you do get a lot less possibilities to customize your camera. But that is obviously not inherently a good thing, but we get to that later. The positive aspect of that, however, is that most of the settings that you do get are pretty self-explanatory. So for most of the time, you don't struggle to find anything that you're looking for. One massive advantage that the Leica has over the Fuji is that manual focus. Sure, you can manual focus on the Fuji as well, but it's focused by wire and I didn't find it to be fun or intuitive at all. With the Leica, on the other hand, you can always press a button on the lens to get it into manual focusing mode and you get a true mechanical focusing experience. I honestly have never understood the whole hype around manual focusing and I still prefer using autofocus and I will continue to use autofocus, but at least having the ability to use manual focus in a very nice and intuitive way whenever you might need it because the autofocus might struggle, might be low light, whatever it may be is very nice in my opinion. So overall, I think personally, I prefer the Leica in terms of its button layout and so on. The Fuji has a bit more buttons and dials and gives you more possibilities for customization. The Leica is a bit more minimalistic and a bit more self-explanatory if you like. You do get that tilt screen on the Fuji, which is very useful some of the time and it's very well integrated. I also prefer the joystick to the four-way thumb thing that the Leica has but the Leica does have that solid build quality and that aesthetic. I think the Leica wins, but it's really down to personal preference. And on some days, depending on what I'm doing, I might actually prefer the Fuji. So as you can see, I'm a bit torn between the two. When it comes to the aesthetics, I just love the Leica design language, but my fiance still insists that the Fuji is the better looking. So again, I guess you can't really go wrong with either of the two cameras. So overall, I just think that the Leica is probably more reliable at least when it comes to weather and dust resistance, even though the Fuji is certainly somewhat rugged as well. So if you like to shoot in bad environments a lot, like out in the rain or whatever, that might actually be a deciding factor for you. If you pride yourself on being a raw shooter and you enjoy the process of editing every single image you take, 
you will probably get more out of the Leica files than you would out of the Fuji files for the simple reason that you do have a higher megapixel count, you do have that bigger full frame sensor over the APS-C sensor and you do get a bit more information out of the file. If however you are more like me, meaning that you enjoy the process of taking photos and figuring out the best settings on your camera but not so much the art of post-processing, you might actually prefer the Fuji. Don't get me wrong, the JPEGs you get out of the Leica are by no means bad. But at least in my experience, I think the Leica gets the white balance wrong more often than the Fuji, especially when there are artificial lights around. And you have a lot less room to customize the JPEG profiles that you get on the Leica. With the Fuji on the other hand, you get all of those juicy film style looks, which I honestly wasn't planning to use at all at first when I got the camera, simply because I thought they were kind of amateurish and cheap. And while they might be, they might be a bit gimmicky, but they also produce great results. And the film simulations themselves are honestly just the tip of the iceberg. You can go deep into the menu and customize those film simulations to create your own JPEG recipes that are completely unique to you. Or you can find recipes that someone else has created and just play around with those. You can even save different recipes to use in different occasions. And of course, you can fine tune the white balance. After years of being a Fuji shooter, I honestly didn't know how awesome the Fuji white balance actually was. Rarely, if ever, did I actually think that the Fuji did get the white balance wrong in any of my shots. But I still wanted to add a bit more warmth to the images I got. So I fine tuned the white balance and well, I'm happy with the results. All the images you see from the Fuji X100V are straight out of camera. During the whole duration of me owning the X100, be it the F or the V, I have probably edited less than 10 images. I've even stopped shooting RAW altogether for the most part. It just wasn't necessary in my opinion. Sure, you could get more out of these images, but honestly I'm very happy with the way they are. After all, I'm not doing anything commercial and I'm not making these for Instagram either, at least for the most part. These are just my memories. Simple, honest and not way overdone. So yeah, with that being said, the Leica JPEGs really aren't bad either. And even though I feel like the white balance lands on the cold side of the temperature spectrum fairly often when shooting with artificial lights, and I feel like a lot of images have a slight green hue to them, which I also don't like, I still overall really enjoy the look that you get with the JPEGs. They are fairly unique and they are certainly completely different to what you get with the Fuji. With that being said, I might just get back into Lightroom editing and also, this is a purely subjective statement, but I actually often prefer the images that come straight out of the Fuji over those straight out of the Leica. For the most part, again, that is true when shooting in artificially lit situations. Who would have thought? It's not entirely fair though, I know I've only had the Leica for like two weeks so I'm not fully used to it yet. I'm surely probably not using it to its fullest potential and there might be settings for further customization that I just don't know about yet. If so, and I will find out about them in the future, I'll let you know down in the comments below. Anyway, I would be interested to know what you think. Do you prefer the Fuji images or the Leica images? Are all of them shit? Do you like both of them? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Low light performance was actually one of the big deciding factors for me that drove me to the Leica Q2. It has that full frame sensor, a wider aperture at f1.7 and also image stabilization other than the Fuji. All of those should make for vastly better low light performance and well the low light performance is certainly better but it's not day and night. Let's start with the Fuji though. As I've already said the Fuji sports a 23mm lens on an APS-C X-Trans sensor with an f2 aperture and no stabilization. That means that ISO performance gets a bit rough north of ISO 3200 and you can't really go too low with your shutter speed either unless you use a tripod or you don't mind blurry images. I got to be honest, I was a bit frustrated with the X100 at first simply because it wasn't that good in low light situations. So you got to get used to it a bit and you got to figure out how to use it best in low light situations, especially because you do have to play around a bit with the shutter speeds you can use them depending on how shaky your hands are and everything. And also you can get used to the fact that the grain you get with higher ISO images on the Fuji actually doesn't look too bad. It does kind of have that, and I know other people have said that before me, but it really does kind of have that analog grain type of look to it. So it's not really that annoying high ISO noise, at least in my opinion. But still, if you want to get fairly clean images, you have to know what you're doing and you have to know the limits you get with this camera. But if you play your cards right, you can still get fairly nice images in low light situations, but you will struggle to get that 
brighter than real life look and experience. You will however certainly be able, in my opinion, to get images that are very true to what your own eyes can see in any given situation. The Leica on the other hand really excels here. The ISO performance is actually, at least in my opinion, only slightly better than that on the Fuji. So I personally wouldn't go any higher than ISO 6400 unless it's like an emergency situation or I run out of other options like lowering the shutter speed. But yeah, as I said, ISO performance is slightly improved, but not worlds apart. You can, however, because of that stabilization, shoot at 1 8th of a second, 1 15th of a second, without any issues or shakes. So obviously, if you have too much movement within the frame, that won't help you at all. But still, you also do get that wider aperture. In conclusion though, I think the Leica vastly outperforms the Fuji when it comes to low light. That is not really surprising at all and that also doesn't mean that you can't get great results with the Fuji in low light situations. I've certainly enjoyed using it in low light a ton. You just have to know its limitations and just kind of work with it. The last category is probably the one that the least of you are actually interested in but I personally am very much interested in how these cameras perform in the video section and since most other people just kind of gloss over this, I have decided to include it in this video. And here is the short and sweet conclusion. Both cameras are really frustrating when it comes to shooting video, each in their own very unique ways. Both cameras shoot 4K at up to 30 frames per second and 1080p at up to 120 frames per second, all in 8-bit. The video autofocus sucks on both cameras, but it is still better on the Fuji in my opinion. Manual focus is on the other hand a much more enjoyable experience on the Leica as it has that sweet sweet mechanical focus. The Fuji is capable of shooting video in F-Log which is far superior if you want to retain as much dynamic range as possible and of course you get all of those sweet sweet film simulations to choose from for video mode as well. In my opinion the Fuji is actually by far the more capable video machine and I find the image of the Fuji much more pleasing in video mode than that of the Leica. The Fuji does also offer at least a small microphone input. You don't get any of that with the Leica Q2. The Leica does however have a party trick up its sleeve that the Fuji is clearly lacking and that is the image stabilization. With the Q2 you can shoot video handheld without those annoying shakes and jitters you get from the Fuji. The Fuji without any stabilization is almost unusable handheld in my opinion. So there you have it. Both are somewhat capable but they also both lack some vital features which makes them both fairly useless in most run and gun situations. If you want to shoot handheld, the Leica, in my opinion, is clearly the way to go, simply because it has that image stabilization. With the Fuji, you can only do that, in my opinion, if you use stabilization in post, which for the most part isn't great, and it also crops in onto your footage, or if you are prepared to slap around a gimbal, which kind of negates the point of having such a small camera. The Q2 is kind of frustrating because it could be so much improved if they would just add more capabilities like shooting in lock. But I guess, again, most Leica Q2 owners are probably not interested in using this for video at all. So I'm not holding my breath until Leica releases that firmware update. And that's it. Those are my thoughts after owning the Leica Q2 for about two weeks and the Fuji X100V for about two years. I'm not quite sure if I want to actually sell the Fuji X100V because I really like it. It has really grown near and dear to my heart and it does have its advantages even over the Leica Q2. The Leica Q2 overall, in my opinion, is the better camera even though it is lacking some of the features that actually make the Fuji X100 very unique and very fun indeed. To be completely honest, I was a bit underwhelmed when I first got the Leica Q2, simply because the difference between this and the Fuji X100V isn't actually that big. And as I said many times in this video, the Fuji actually really does have its advantages over the Leica. I am, however, getting more and more used to shooting with this camera. It is obviously a learning curve and I'm excited to see what I can actually do with this camera. It has been kind of a dream for me to own this for the past two or three years or so. I just honestly couldn't justify spending that type of money. I kind of just talked myself into doing it and I'm fairly happy that I did because this is a wonderful camera. So what do you think? Fuji, Leica, maybe something entirely different? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, I would very much appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos about the Q2 or if you are interested in videos about EDC, cameras, bags, tech in general. I see you all next week. Until then, take care.
，拜拜。